Yeah, I want to give an update on the uh, HHO system. Basically, <coughs> I got it all plumbed up <coughs> and um, it's installed. The brackets installed down here. You can see um, it's bolted up to the um, engine, which might be pretty cool because a little engine vibration. It's very solidly mounted. It's probably got about eight bolts holding it into a um, quarter inch steel angle iron plus a 10 gauge plate. All those are lock nuts holding it down. Um, it's in there solid. And this does not touch the reservoir. It's actually missing the reservoir. Uh, you notice the wires are just coiled up here because that's going to be the next thing. Um, I have the reservoir tank, very solidly mounted, 10 gauge steel plate. It's been truck bed lined. lined. It's got washers in it and all this other stuff. Um, what happens is this is the reservoir. This will feed down. It's got to go four inches down to um, the bottom of this. It's down there on the bottom, on the very bottom. It generates the solution goes in between these plates. A lot of the plates are neutral plates, but they actually become electrically charged when the solution is in there. Uh, I'll explain that later. Not every single plate has a wire to it, a positive or a negative ground. But the neutral plates actually get electricity because of the elect electrolyte in there, which will go between the plates. It, it's, a, it's a probably a good design. This is actually uh, from, um, let me suddenly find out, who, I forgot who it was from. I'll post it on the end there. But... Um, then it comes out the top. Now this does not touch this. It's not even going to rub that. And then it comes out the top. It goes into the bottom of the reservoir tank. And then the electrolyte is in here. It bubbles through the electrolyte. Comes out here. And then it goes down here through this pipe um, hose. And this just has plain water. This does not have electrolyte. Like this has the electrolyte. This has water. Okay. Then it bubbles through the water. This is another safety check in case you have a, a backfire. See, this is actually just being made on demand. It's only being made on demand in this little unit right here. It's not actually being stored any place. That's the safest way to do it. But it goes through this. It bubbles through here. So that's another protection in case this caught fire. It can't get through here. It's got to go through here. And not much is being made on demand goes through here, comes out here, and then this is a one-way check valve. That's a one-way check valve. It can only go through this way. It can't go through the other way. It can't go through that way. And then it goes into the air cleaner. Now, what I did inside the air cleaner, I made a hole the exact size. I was going to make a fitting in here, but I made a hole the exact size of this. And I used um, emblem adhesive, which is a lot stronger than even... You know, this little tube is like five bucks. This is for gluing on emblems. This glue does not go away, man. It's like gluing on the emblems on the outside of a car that stays there for 20 years. That's what I use to glue that hose to this. And when I made this tape, this line on this tape, there's an angle cut on a hose. It's actually cut on a hose, um, an angle. So it goes down directly into the Ventura, the carburetor. Now, all the other thing is, I want to take a note because if you're interested in what kind of carburetor I have on here, this is a Toyota Corolla carburetor remanufactured from a 78 Corolla. It works much better on this engine than the original stock one, and it can handle all kinds of crazy angles like 45 degree angles and stuff like that going up and down hills. Um, it's a much better carburetor. But I also want to note that when I set this carburetor up, there's actually a rubber gasket between this washer and the metal and there's also a custom rubber grommet that's be underneath the air cleaner between the carburetor it's totally sealed so if I put a snorkel on this puppy later I won't be able to run HHO underwater I don't think but maybe I can I don't know but if uh, I put a snorkel on it it will um, actually um, be all sealed no water can get in there I want to just interject that on this video because I don't think a lot of people realize that super important tip when they put this Toyota carburetor on. There is a custom grommet I found on Amazon that you actually have to take a Dremel, make it a little bit bigger to fit, 
it will make this air stock air cleaner fit on this Toyota carburetor perfectly. So anyway, that's the plumbing. Again, goes out from the reservoir to the bottom of the actual electrolysis um, dry cell unit. This is a uh, 16 plate unit which is plenty oversized for this little engine. This is a 1.3 liter. Comes out the top here, goes out through this hose, back into the reservoir, bubbles up through the reservoir electrolyte, goes out this hose, goes bubbles down, and this is just plain water. This is called a bubbler. And this is all on here with uh, 10 gauge steel. I also wrapped it with um, foam so it can't rub through the steel, you know, just in case it uh, it wouldn't anyway, but it, just in case, and it's sitting up on top of this. <laughs> I mean, it's. I made this. I over, over, overbuilt this damn thing actually. And then it bubbles through here, and then it comes through this hose, goes through a one-way check valve, and directly into the air cleaner. So, plumbing is done. The next is the wiring, and uh, I don't have. You know, I got it all figured out. I just got to figure out where to mount it. Um, but I'm going to show you real briefly. Of course some of it's already wired to this but I'll show you real briefly what that is because that'll be on the next video and then I'll be running this puppy and um, uh, seeing what kind of mileage we get and test in the future but let me just show you real briefly the wiring came with the kit and I'll post with the I forgot the name of the kit um, <laughs> but basically it's just a simple relay like this um, it has a dash switch and you connect the one of the wires this actually goes to some hot wire only when the ignition's on so you can only turn a unit on when the ignition is on and the relay will activate this and, and some of the wires go down to the starter but it looks pretty simple I already kind of pre-wired it a little bit so um, I got it all figured out and I have a bunch of other wires if I need to uh, extend this so that'll be the next step and I do have the uh, potassium or KOH or potassium hydroxide I forgot what the hell that solution is I have the right stuff for it so it's a particular type of drain opener that's the best for elect electrolyte and uh, we'll be running an amp meter on it when we get it going to make sure I only have it set originally this can do 30 amps max but I want to have it just set for 20, um, 10 amps originally and I might put a bigger alternator on later that's exactly like stock uh, and run it at 20 amps but first let's see how it runs on 10 amps if it gets 30 miles to the gallon I'm probably gonna leave it like 10 amps and today I'm happy and if that works out this will be the second thing I put I mean the third thing I put the HHO and I'll show you what the third thing if the second thing will be that El Camino I have out here which is that puppy right there that El Camino with the 354 speed posi that'll have HHO in it that'll be the second experiment we'll see what kind of mileage that puppy gets well that's it it's a Liberty Industries actually from Canada right right buddy he approves Putin approves and uh, so does Mr. Rocky right <laughs> anyway that's it it's a Liberty Industries right Rocky we're gonna knock out them oil companies right yeah we are yeah go get them baby is that your little cheer? What you'd say? Anyway.